This is Timothy Perfect from Two Canoe Software, and I'm going to show you some exciting news we have today about the uh, MDS Automaton. So I have one right here. This is the MDS Automaton. It doesn't have the enclosure on it, but um, this is an Arduino Itsy Bitsy from Adafruit. Um, it's got the 32U4 processor on it that allows you to emulate a keyboard. What I'm going to show you is how we can fully automate the M1 setup from uh, uh, just turning it on, having it run, completely run an MDS workflow. And the only thing you have to do is hold the power button and the rest of it is just completely done automatically. So let me tell you my setup right here. I have this uh, 2020 Mac mini right here. And uh, all I have plugged into it is, this is the MDS uh, thumb drive or a flash drive. Um, and then this is the HDMI so you can see the output and then there's power. So nothing else plugged in. Um, so this is great. And this works, of course, with any uh, M1 Mac Mini or any M1. So the way that I'll start, I'll, first thing I'll do is I will plug in the automaton. Okay. And now I will, um, since this is actually up and running right now, I'll press and hold the power button until it turns off. Okay, now it's powered off. And I want to show you something that if you don't have the head on it or a monitor on it, how can you detect how long you have to press the power button down? So watch this. When I press and hold the power button, you can hear the chime. There's the chime. And then you can see that the light comes on. It's kind of hard to see. But if you hold it until the light dims and then let go, that's right over here. You can't really see it. Um, that actually puts it into uh, um, recovery mode. You can see that it goes in recovery mode. Now at this point, I don't touch anything. So the setup time is literally seven seconds. So at this point, the automaton takes over and it will select the options one. Uh, it gives it a little bit of time to account for variability. Um, so it selects the option, presses return, and now it'll boot into uh, one true recovery. Again, this is all just controlled by the automaton. Um, and the first thing it does is it opens up the uh, recovery. And let me go uh, full screen on this. And so now that it uh, is at the recovery, it, it selects the utilities menu and then it'll open up terminal and it'll actually launch the MDS workflow from the USB drive that's plugged in. This of course can be a disk image mounted on a web server, um, but for this demo, I'm just using a flash drive. Um, so once the terminal is open, it'll run the workflow. And at this point, where you can programmatically take control of the Mac Mini, um, again, the automaton is kicked this workflow off. The, the operator doesn't do anything. And you can see it pulls up MDS Deploy, and my workflow um, is automatically going to be running in 10 seconds, so it counts down. Um, and the issue with this is that it's in, I wanted, I told the workflow to actually erase it. So instead of running the workflow, it opens up the uh, reset password dialog. Actually, this is called the key something utility, key uh, uh, setup utility or something like that. But anyways, the automaton uh, takes over and goes up to the menu and chooses a race Mac. You can see that it does that. And from there, it uses uses VoiceOver to select the Erase Mac, tabs through and completely erases it. So at this point, the Mac is now erasing and the automaton is actually done. So it just marked uh, a piece in, in non-violent memory that says, hey, on next boot, continue onwards. So it doesn't really matter how long this takes. Um, and what I've noticed with the M1 Max is that it, uh, it, when you reboot it, it will um, cycle the power in the um, uh, on the USB ports. So it'll come back up and after it boots into it, it'll go through and actually, uh, um, uh, what is it called? Activate uh, this Mac Mini. So you just got the chime, the Mac is now completely erased. Um, it'll automatically boot back into the one true recovery. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of video uh, signal. There we go. So now it's booting up to the one true recovery. It does it does, does it very quickly. I actually, build in some padding that can be fine tuned, um, but it does wait for this activation screen that comes up. And this is where an interesting decision process needs to be needs to be made. So right now you can oh you can see it's selecting the Wi-Fi and it put in the Wi-Fi username and password. 
And now you can see in the upper right hand corner up there, it is trying to connect up to Wi-Fi. If you have Ethernet plugged in, of course, it'll just go through this automatically and you won't have to do that. Um, but for this one, it um, the plan is, and this is, uh, it's be added in before it's done is the uh, detection of whether it's Wi-Fi or or Ethernet uh, when the workflow is running and set the automaton to know that. So it's kind of hard to see, but right uh, below below the smiling uh, finder icon, you can see there's a spinning gear, which means that it's being activated over the network. So this isn't the uh, the process that's waiting for anything. This is actually the activation that's happening right now. Um, so once that's activated, the activation time can be variable. Um, as well as the uh, time it takes to connect up to the Wi-Fi network. So I built in a little bit extra padding here to make sure that all this process um, successfully completes before it moves on. But anyways, once, once that's activated, it's uh, ready to um, run the workflow again. And the workflow it runs is the exact same workflow it did, but this time it'll take note that the drive is actually erased and it'll go through. So there it goes. Right. So that part's done. You can see that it, it finishes that and it'll go through and basically start the process again. Opens up terminal and it will open up, it'll run the workflow. But this time the workflow will discover that, hey, the drive is now erased. Um, we can go ahead and start uh, installation on it. And the way that the, the new workflow works with the M1 Max is that it um, will detect uh, that it's blank then it will copy specific a couple of files to trigger a migrate install and put the packages to be installed on next boot and then it opens up the installer and one of the nice things is that it copies the installer to the destination this is not technically necessary but what's nice about this if the installer is on the destination and it gets wiped after the workflow is run um, that it, you don't need to have the flash drive attached anymore or the network attached for the, the disk image mounted. So this means that things can go a lot faster because you can pull out the um, automaton, you can pull out the, um, uh, the flash drive and move on to the other Mac. Okay, so now it's been done and it opens up the installer. And when it opens up the installer, it'll kick off the install. There it goes. So now the installation is kicked off. The drive has been prepped to install the packages and scripts and any customization. Um, for this one, I did not, uh, let me switch back to this. Uh, I did not, um, uh, I set it up to install a user and install workflows, a couple of browsers. So very simple workflow. And uh, so this will go, and you'll notice that the time says 58 minutes. Because the installer is locally, it's actually quite fast. It'll go, it'll take about 15 minutes, uh, soup to nuts. So it'll be done uh, in about 15 minutes, it'll reboot, start running the workflows. And a couple minutes after that, you'll have a fully configured Mac. And I've had, I had to touch it for the, in the first five seconds. I, plug, I plugged in the automaton, held the power button down until it went into one true recovery, then I'm done. So uh, that's all the amount of work that it takes. Oh, and I can remove the, uh, the flash drive or the SSD that I have plugged in um, to the Mac. And I don't need that anymore because uh, the uh, resources are all copied locally. And so we don't need that anymore. So I can move on to the next one and I can take my uh, automaton out as well. And I can move over and go on to the next one. So the question is, how does it actually set up the packages? It doesn't use the automaton at this point. The automaton is done uh, giving these commands. At this point, uh, there's a launch daemon that's put in after the installer runs. It'll go through and install the packages. And the way MDS works is it packages up any of your scripts or your uh, um, software that you want to install. And packages can either be installed as um, first run, so when it for, or sorry, first boot, or it can, which is normal, or uh, first login. And so um, this, I believe I set this account up to automatically log in. So we'll, we'll let this run and then I'll come back once it's finished and you'll see that without me doing anything except holding the power button on, I have a fully configured reinstalled M1 Mac um, ready to be deployed. All right, so now it is finished installing and it got to the login window. And since the packages are still being, re they're still being installed, it actually puts in a, uh, login window over the, or sorry, the log window over the login window. So it can tell you the, the process as it happens. 
Um, so what it's doing now is it's installing the packages that creates the users, that uh, uh, installs the browsers they put up, turns on SSH, turns on screen sharing, does all the configurations, and then it does a final reboot, and then it's ready to go. So if we look at this, uh, what it's actually doing, this is kind of some of this is kind of interesting because it also it since it's installing non-native versions of the browser, the ones I put in there were just older versions of Firefox and Chrome, and since the uh, Rosetta has been installed, you'll actually see in the log that it goes through and it compiles those or it translates those ahead of time so they launch very much faster um, on first launch. Um, so it's one of the nice things. If you do have some applications that aren't um, native, um, that it does that as part of the MDS workflow because Rosetta is installed. Um, you can see that it's continuing on with the packages and uh, I believe that it's hitting up uh, yeah, Chrome at this point. Once it's finished on Chrome, like I said, uh, it'll finish up the workflows and it actually cleans up after itself. So it'll delete the installer and delete all of the workflows um, from the machine, including the item that launches this, this log in front of the login window. And then um, it'll be ready to go right at the login window and you'll be completely done. So you know that uh, when you're at the login window that it's been completely uh, installed. Um, the other thing, this, this works great with MDM as well and Auto Advance is part of uh, Big Sur. So if you want to have it, if you have your machine enrolled in DEP and you want to have it automatically uh, enrolled in MDM, it'll do that as it can do that as well. Um, if it can be a third party MDM, it can be the MDM that's built into MDS. Um, so you can have that uh, that feature as well if you want to be able to uh, post workflow, have it enrolled in MDM um, through DEP or um, you can have the user enroll and have our user enrolled MDM as well. Um, so just finishing up with the uh, what is it called? The Rosetta, Rosetta 2 prepping. Um, again, it's doing the post install now, and every moment it's going to reboot. There it goes. So it reboots, and now it's a completely set up machine. Um, I do believe I turned on screen sharing and SSH, so I can go in and um, control this once it, it comes up. Again, I have no keyboard and mouse. Uh, installed, uh, the network does get carried over or does get, as part of the workflow, get does get set up. So it should join the wireless network and then I should be able to um, browse to it or be able to connect screen sharing to it and then be able to control it. And I do also believe this workflow has the auto login as, as well for this user. So not only will it go to the, uh, won't go to the login window, but it'll log right in. And that's that's configurable, of course. All right, just finishing up the uh, the startup, and it looks like it's logging in. And let me go ahead and start sharing the screen. Yep, it came up. We're screen sharing. All right, so now I'm screen sharing, and if I look into my applications. You can see that I have Firefox here and I have Chrome here. And it's also, it's been set up for um, uh, sharing. Obviously screen sharing is working because that's what I'm using here. But just so you can see that there's no, no magic going on. If I go into sharing, you can see that screen sharing has been turned on and remote login has been turned on. And the computer has been named uh, silly Mac for Silicon Mac. And then if I look at the name of the drive, it's also Silly Mac as well. And those got set up as part of the workflow. So thank you very much for watching. And I, um, I'm excited because the Automaton makes this new setup really incredibly easy. So again, uh, the amount of time, the, the full amount of time it takes is about 22 minutes, which is comparable to what we had in the Intel. But the amount of time that the, the, the actual tech time is 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds, where you plug this in, you power on the machine, and you're done. And then after the installer kicks in, after a couple minutes, you can pull this out and move on to the next one. So I'm very excited to be able to uh, um, show that this is actually working. I'll be putting out a beta soon to be able to have folks to try it. Um, but please give it a shot and get in contact. Uh, just go to twocanoes.com slash MDS. 
um, to see uh, more information or the product page. Um, it also has ways to you can go and download the betas and be able to test it out. Make sure you also join the Mac Admin Slack. That's where the majority of this project happens. It is an open source project, so you can download it for free, but you can purchase the automatons for us as well as buy support if you would like to support the project and get uh, support for the product. So again, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.